You want me to put that on my todger? She does not belong in Monty Shit Show. Harry's wife now irritates most people, annoys a lot of people, and incurs dislike from increasing numbers, all based upon the way that she behaves. She is that unflushable turd that don't will simply not go away, at least not yet, but she's circling the drain as part of the downward spiral. Dior said they didn't want anything to do with her and that it was incorrect to suggest that there was a collaboration. New Calm, as soon as she was seen sporting one of their anti-stress patches, explained that there was no collaboration between them. The A-listers run away like children playing hide-and-seek or as if she's some kind of demonic individual that they're terrified of whenever she appears. And her supporters are dwindling in numbers. But it's also on the residential front that Harry's wife found herself in another situation of being disliked. The New York Times style section did a piece about Monty Shitshow a couple of weeks ago. And somebody called Gwyn Lurie, who is the CEO and executive editor of the Monty Shitshow Journal Media Group, had come back with an editorial response. She and her husband are writers and producers with some success in Hollywood. And the editorial that she's responded with is a scathing rebuke of the obsession with celebrity culture. And, of course, this also means that it involves Harry's wife because that's what she embraces. The editorial, written a number of days ago in the Monty Shit Show Journal, states, Last week I wrote about the long demise of the Santa Barbara news press and the poignance that the final chapter of its tortured story turned out to be chapter 7. And I touched on the irreplaceable, irreplaceable role local news plays in a robust functioning democracy. A recent piece in the notably not local New York Times on the meaning of Monty Shitshow entitled What is it about Monty Shitshow? is a cautionary tale illustrating the perils of a distant media giant attempting to define our narrative versus homegrown boots-on-the-ground local reporting. As of today, the New York Times has issued four corrections to their What is it about Monty Shitshow story, which was forwarded to me by essentially my entire contacts list. The NYT reporter, Amy LaRocco, didn't even get Monty Shitshow's geography right, to give you some idea of the fundamental nature of the things the Times got wrong about us. When it comes to reporting on Monty Shitshow, the Times reporter literally couldn't get her bearings. At the end of the piece, the Times asked if they got the story right, and if they didn't, please send a correction. I have so many corrections, I've decided to print them here. Because I'm pessimistic, the grey lady, as the NYT refers to itself and my kids sometimes refer to me, would give me more space for my corrections than they use for anything but their pithy reportage. One of the biggest problems with the Times piece on Monty Shit Show is the prism through which they chose to look at our Riviera. The prism of celebrity. Now, pausing there. Clearly... This editor and stalwart of Monty Shitcho doesn't like it to be viewed through this prism of celebrity. But what is Harry's wife? She's not really a royal because she doesn't carry out any royal duties, although she's got the title. Is she a philanthropist? She plays at it. Is she a screenwriter? No. Has she got some tech company that she's steering forward? No. She essentially is a celebrity. She turns up at events, chats shit, takes a fee, talks about herself, and is simply known for who she married. Yes, she was an actress, but wasn't well known. She has no notable achievements. And the only reason that people know about her is that she married Prince Harry. She is a celebrity. She's essentially famous for being famous. And thus, someone like her fits with the problem of what this editor is complaining about in relation to the way that Monty Shitshow is viewed. 
She continues by writing, No one I know came here to be near celebs, Harry's wife did, of course, who are far better viewed free-range in their natural habitats in places like Malibu, Calabasas, and the not-so-hidden hills. People come here to avoid tabloid culture. Harry's wife doesn't. She continues to embrace it, even though she claims not to know what a tabloid is. But not La Roca, who is evidently the writer of the piece. She was combing our shores for celebs like a beachcomber with a metal detector looking for drop change. If you haven't read the Times' piece, even though all your friends and relatives have sent it to you by now, the reporter, whose main hustle is as a fashion editor at large for New York Magazine, focuses so much on the famous who live in this town, one can only assume her story mostly reflects her own personal obsession with celebrity culture. Clearly, La Rocca understands that today, celebrity mentions are clickbait gold. La Rocca mentions a litany of local celebs, including Katy Perry's dad, whom she mockingly describes more like a cartoon than as a person. Endlessly bopping around town dressed in a psychedelic mashup of Chrome Hearts and Ed Hardy, an aesthetic that borrows equally from 90s OC skaters Elton John and Flavor Flav. Poor Katy Perry's dad. The NY Times didn't even give him a name other than Katy Perry's dad. For the record, his name is Morris Hudson, but known by locals as Keith. La Rocca says... A driving tour of Montecicchio's elaborate and forbidding gates and line driveways suggests that only Madame Tussauds has more celebrities per square foot. Really? So a driveway with a gate means Casa Celebrity? Live and learn, I suppose. La Rocca makes driveways sound like castle moats stocked with alligators. And I suppose she leaves her door in NYC open to anyone who'd like to come by and kibitz. We happen to keep our moats stocked with ducklings and mermaids. The Times' piece does its darndest to tie everyone here to one famous person or another with language like more than a third of Montecicchio residents are over the 65, and this tally includes Carol Burnett. I'm surprised La Rocca didn't say she enjoyed breathing the air here, knowing that even a microscopic amount of it may have once been exhaled by Gwyneth Paltrow. Maybe this was the breath she used to blow out one of her signature candles. In all seriousness, however, in addition to the article reading more like Deadline Hollywood or TMZ than what I used to know as the paper of record, Lost in LaRocca's celebrity pack prose, the real omission from What Is It About Monte Shitcho is what is truly special about its people. Famous and unfamous alike, its culture, its human capital, and most of all, its spirit. When our family first moved here, we were surprised by the warm welcome we received by locals. My husband joked that this place seemed filled with people who had never been hurt. I think it was our second day here when someone in a giant Mercedes SUV drove up to our home and returned a wallet I'd left at the Coffee Bean. I saw your address on the driver's license, so I figured I'd just drive it over. And that was far from the last time something like that had happened. When our kids attended Montecicchio Union School, we were surprised to learn that nearly half the MUS families were renters, many of them stretching to live in a place that offered a public school where the average class size was 17 a school that was as good or better than any school, public or private, that we looked at in L.A. The thing about Monty Shit Show we most love is that it attracts people who are less socially aspirational, hmm, but not Harry's wife, of course, than many of the people we knew who were living in L.A. or in NYC, my husband's hometown. If climbing the Hollywood social ladder is your priority, you would likely not choose to live in a place like Monty Shit Show, Harry's wife is looking to climb Hollywood's social ladder. She's chosen the wrong place to live. Because you wouldn't choose Monty Shit Show where one would have no way of knowing that the person flip-flops at the next table, or Janine's, actually holds the original patent for fire. Never mentioned in LaRocco's piece is the burgeoning tech community in Monty Shit Show and Santa Barbara, nor that this is home to some of the world's most trailblazing entrepreneurs, many of whom are still active and working right here, locally, the founders of Sonos, the Google Quantum AI computer, Gorilla Glue, Kate Farms, Stussy, Flying A Studio, Deckers, Procore, Sex Wax, Dr. Sansom was the first to administer insulin in a patient, Hidden Valley Ranch Dressing, Tri-Tip, Sims, Pal Peralta, Martha Graham Dance Company, Earth Day, Kinko's, Big Dog Clothing, Balance Bar, McConnell's Ice Cream, Direct Relief International, SEE International, Egg McMuffin, Blue LED Inventor, Shuji Nakamura, won the Nobel, Pri Nobel Prize, Clenet Coachworks, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Monty Shitshow's 
Tragic 2018 debris flow was referenced, but nothing about the incredible way this community rallied to support each other through that tragedy. Also never mentioned was that Santa Barbara is said to have more non-profits per capita than any county in the country, organisations supported greatly by Montecicco's large and engaged philanthropic community. Another peculiarity of the Times profile of Montecicco that gets lost in its litany of celebrity is that somehow La Rocca got Montecicco's county supervisor to boast about his defiant lack of concern for his own constituents' interests. When people come to me and say, oh, this or that will be terrible for property value, I just say good, said Williams. Really, our elected member of the County Board of Supervisors thinks it's good when Montecicco's property values go down. Seems a little weird considering a significant amount of Montecicco's property taxes support Santa Barbara County services, including the salaries of Supervisor Williams and his staff. Importantly for me, what I really missed in the NYT reporting about Monty Shitcho is what I most appreciate about this place, its quirk, the idiosyncrasies of this little village that have managed to outlast the powerful forces for growth and modernisation that perpetually work against that. And all of that is found in the detail. The lack of street lights, the lack of traffic lights, the lack of commercialisation, the lack of self-promotion, well, not when it comes to Harry's wife, of course, and yes, the height limits and regulations on walls and gates. With its breezily inaccurate and hyperbolic tone, LaRocca's piece most illustrates the perils of having your narrative written by a distant and flippant media giant. For whatever reason, the New York Times decided it was time to write something colourful about Monty Shitcho, but they sent a fashion reporter to do it. Monty Shitcho has never been about fashion, being in fashion, or what's trending. We'll leave that for L.A., and if you don't believe me, ask Harry's wife. Accordingly, this piece, this fight back by Gwyn Lurie, details all of the things that she likes about Monty Shitcho that the article in the New York Times failed to pick up on. But it also highlights all of the things that aren't pertinent or relevant to Harry's wife. Monty Shitcho doesn't like self-promotion. Harry's wife lives for it. It's not about celebrity. That's what Harry's wife is. So, once again, it shows that not only is Harry's wife selected the wrong place to live, but someone like her is undoubtedly getting right up the nose of all other Montecicco residents because she encapsulates the very idea of Montecicco that is created from afar, but not how they see it themselves. Even Harry's wife manages to alienate the ethos and spirit of a place by moving there. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.